Okay, so today we are going to talk about COVID-19. First of all, we'll talk about assessment and classification of patients with COVID-19. After that, we will talk about all the investigations that you need to do in COVID-19 patient. And at the end, we will talk in detail about the treatment protocols and all the updates on the new treatments. When you have diagnosed a patient with COVID-19 coronavirus, the first thing that you need to do is you have to classify a patient. You have to classify a patient into mild, moderate and severe category. How do you classify a patient? You classify a patient on the basis of the saturation of oxygen and the respiratory rate. You check their saturation and if the saturation is greater than 94% and respiratory rate is less than 24 per minute, the patient is a mild case. This mild case can be treated at home. And this is classified as no pneumonia. If the saturation level is 90 to 94% and respiratory rate is from 24 to 30 per minute, then this patient is a case of pneumonia or we simply write it as 2 plus. This patient has to be dealt in hospital and needs to be admitted. And then there is the third case. A third case in saturation level is dropping and saturation level is below 90% and respiratory rate is greater than 30 per minute. This patient is a severe patient. This patient is critical and this patient needs continuous monitoring and continuous treatment in either ICU or in the hospital. This patient will be also classified as pneumonia, but three plus. Now on the basis of this classification, we will treat each category accordingly. Now, what are the investigations that need to be performed in a COVID-19 patient? There are few investigations that you need to perform in each and every patient of COVID-19. What are those investigations? You have to perform complete blood count and you have to look for WBC count specifically. You have to do C-reactive protein, serum ferritin level, LDH level, serum IL-6 levels. These are all the inflammatory mediators that will be elevated showing the inflammation and they also show the prognosis of a patient with COVID-19. Specially elevated IL-6 and serum ferritin levels are important prognostic factors for a patient with COVID-19. You will also perform plasma D-dimer levels. Sometimes it happens that the patient is having clots in the blood. Elevated plasma D-dimer level will show clotting process going on in the body. You will have to perform blood grouping and typing. You will also have to check all the organs, all the systems. You will have to perform LFTs, serum creatinine levels, serum urea levels, and serum electrolytes. What if the patient has comorbidities, comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, COPD, dyslipidemia, coronary artery disease, or even asthma? In these patients, you will also have to perform few additional investigations. You will have to perform serum troponin levels, ECG, to assess the level of heart. You will also have to perform HbA1c level to assess the sugar control. You will have to perform lipid profile. Other than that, you will have to order serum pro-BNP levels. Pro-BNP levels, whenever there is an underlying heart disease, that heart disease can cause pulmonary edema and that pulmonary edema with underlying heart disease will cause elevated pro-BNP levels. High resolution CT of the lungs will tell you about the severity of damage to the lungs. Serum procalcitonin level is an inflammatory mediator which will be elevated in an inflammatory process like COVID-19 infection. This is an HRCT of a patient with COVID-19 infection. And if you see this all white area, this is not normal. The lungs, is, the lungs are full of air. They should be black. And if you see white patchy areas like this, this show fibrosis of lung, damage to the lung. And if you look clearly, there is ballooning of the alveoli as well. That ballooning of alveoli is an emphysematous bleb that has been formed due to damage to the lungs by COVID-19 infection. 
coming to the treatment protocols now first of all we classified patient into mild moderate and severe category now according to these categories we will treat this patient first of all this first important thing is the general routine treatment what is the routine treatment that you have to give in all three categories that is tablet paracetamol 500 mg three times daily to control the fever you have to give antitussives to control cough you have to give tablet vitamin c with dosage 500 mg bd twice daily vitamin c is an antioxidant it helps the body recover from all the oxidant damage that has been done in the fight between the covid-19 and the immune system tablet zinc will boost up the immune system it helps the immune system grow capsule omeprazole 20 mg twice daily is given to these patients to prevent stress ulcers this uh, this proton pump inhibitors protect stomach and one most important thing is adequate hydration of the patient and this patient we will go for oral hydration since this patient is a mild case coming to the moderate case pneumonia 2 plus this patient will receive the same treatment same general management as the mild case except that hydration will be done with normal saline iv fluids severe pneumonia patient will get the same general management except one thing one thing is that you have to be slightly conservative with the fluids why you need to be conservative in the fluid administration because sometime it happens that this this fluid accumulates in all ready edematous lungs and that accumulation of uh, a fluid into this edematous lungs will result in respiratory distress so you have to be cautious that if the patient is developing pulmonary edema you have to stop the fluid and you have to give fluids conservatively as much as the patient requires now coming to the antibiotics that you have to give in covid-19 infection covid-19 is a viral infection we do not treat viral infection with antibiotics but antibiotics are given to prevent secondary bacterial infection while the body is already fighting one infection at one time a viral infection at one time body is prone to get infected by bacteria and we will fight the bacteria secondary bacterial infection with antibiotics in mild case you give tablet azithromycin 500 mg for 5 days or you can give tablet amoxiclav amoxicillin with clavulanic acid 625 mg twice daily for 5 days or you can also give tablet doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 5 days in moderate pneumonia it's the same you have to give tablet azithromycin 500 mg oral once daily for 5 days but you have to add injection ceftriaxone 1 g iv twice daily so you have added another antibiotic ceftriaxone cellosporin if secondary bacterial infection is suspected coming to the severe case in severe case tablet azithromycin is with the same dosage as in mild and moderate case but with that you have to add the big guns the big antibiotics like piptaz piperacillin tazobactam 4.5 mg and injection meropenem 500 mg iv 3 times daily if secondary bacterial infection is suspect now look at how we are escalating in antibiotic ladder we started from the bottom of the ladder in the mild case and then we started adding antibiotics and then we climbed the ladder up to piperacillin tazobactam and meropenem in severe cases next important thing in the covid-19 treatment is anticoagulation all patients will need anticoagulation starting from mild moderate and severe every patient will get prophylactic anticoagulation you have to give tablet eliquis 2.5 mg twice daily for 7 days tablet eliquis is basically apixaban apixaban is 10a inhibitors that inhibit clotting or you can also give clopidab once daily for 7 days which is clopidogrel coming towards the moderate pneumonia in moderate pneumonia you have to give 
injection and noxaparin and noxaparin is a heparin analog 40 mg now we have increased the dose subcutaneous once daily dosage for seven days as you know that heparin low molecular weight heparin is contraindicated in end stage renal disease so if the patient is having end stage renal disease then you cannot give low molecular heparin in that case you have to give in end stage renal disease you have to give unfractionated heparin with doses of 5000 units subcutaneous twice daily coming towards the severe pneumonia severe pneumonia has the same management in anticoagulation as the moderate case the third thing the most important thing in covid-19 treatment is steroids steroids in moderate case are to be given tablet dexamethasone 8 mg per oral once daily for 5 days or you can also give tablet methylprednisone midrol 16 mg per oral for 5 days in moderate case you have to give the same treatment but if the patient is not getting better you have to quit the oral dosage and you will have to start iv dexamethasone in severe case you directly start iv steroids injection dexamethasone 0.2 to 0.4 mg per kg weight of the patient iv twice daily for 10 days coming toward the oxygen support oxygen support is one of the very important therapies that these patient will require in mild case oxygen support is not required since we remember that the saturation in mild case was greater than 94% which is normal so this patient does not need oxygen in moderate case you will give oxygen since we remember we classified a patient with saturation level less than 94 as moderate pneumonia and and you have to give oxygen and your target saturation level should be to achieve 92 to 96% of oxygen saturation in blood in oxygen therapy, you escalate in the same way. You will start with the nasal prongs 4 liter per minute. This is a picture showing nasal prongs. And if the patient is not getting better, you will shift to face mask. Face mask will provide more oxygen. Face mask will give 5 to 10 liters per minute of oxygen. This is a face mask. If the patient is not getting better and saturation is dropping, you will have to shift to non-rebreather mask. Non-rebreather mask gives even more oxygen than face mask, 10 to 15 liters per minute. This is a picture showing non-rebreather masks, which gives high oxygen levels. Then there is high flow nasal cannula. If the patient is not getting better with all of these, then you have to shift the patient to high flow nasal cannula. It will give 10 to 40 liters per minute of oxygen. This is a picture showing high flow nasal cannula and then apparatus supplying it. Then if the patient is not getting better with any of the four above, then you will have to shift the patient to CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure. This is a picture showing CPAP machine, which gives oxygen with high pressure to the patient. In severe case, in severe case, the oxygen saturation level should be kept above 90%. Since we remember that patient was dropping saturation in severe case, our target should be to give oxygen to a level that patient saturation level goes above 90 percent and you will have to start straight away from the non-rebreather mask because nasal prongs and face mask won't provide as much oxygen to elevate the saturation and sometimes these severe patients develop respiratory distress and for that you will have to initiate acute respiratory distress protocols to, to save the patient's life pruning is a very important technique that is used to increase oxygenation. Pruning is a position that improves oxygenation levels. One important drug that is being used is injection toculizumab. Injection toculizumab is basically an immunosuppressant. It binds IL-6 and it suppresses the immune system and protects the body from damage that is being done from the immune system of the body. So it binds IL-6, it is a monoclonal antibody and it suppresses the immune system and is found quite effective in the treatment of COVID-19. Remdesivir is an important antiviral that is being used to treat COVID-19. Remdesivir inhibits viral proliferation 
in summary first of all you need to classify a diagnosed patient patient of covid 19 into mild moderate severe category based on the saturation level and respiratory rate then you have to perform all these investigation in every patient of covid 19 and according to that classification you need to give routine treatment involving antipyretics antitussives vitamin c zinc to boost up immune system and to protect the stomach with omeprazole antibiotics we escalate in antibiotics every patient will get anticoagulation steroids are very important for immunosuppression to protect the damage done by the immune system to the body oxygen support not required in mild case and moderate to severe case will require oxygen saturation and escalation is important proning is an important technique that improves oxygenation injection tocilizumab is a monoclonal antibody to il6 an immunosuppressive drug thank you very much So this was COVID-19 treatment. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button. Thank you very much.